guys, Super Action Guy here, and today I wanted to talk about the 4D model kit of the Star Wars Imperial Star Destroyer set. So I just got this thing. I found it at Costco for $14.97. And for that price, I did not want to pass it up. And so I just want to go through kind of thoughts and observations about this, kind of show you what it looks like, obviously, finally assembled, and kind of walk through my thoughts. First up, we have the box. It comes in a decent sized box here. Um, and uh, it's got some nice illustrations of the product, the final build product. It also comes with a shuttle, I'll call it the shuttle Tidarium, uh, for, because you have, uh, well, I'll get to, well, you have Death Star 2 in the background, uh, but it may not be that exact shuttle. Then you have two TIE fighters here, which you assemble, a uh, giant box on the bottom, uh, where the company is, 4dmodelkit.com, and barcode in case you guys wanna ask your Costco if they have it, there's the item number. Side of the box is just more artwork. Um, back of the box here you see some of the pieces. There is a nice poster that comes with this too. Uh, based on the Star Wars logos on it, I'll get to that. I think you're supposed to put it on the ground uh, rather than hang it up. Ages eight and up, 342 pieces. Take that with a great assault. Um, collect them all. When I was there, they had the Razor Crest with Sandcrawler, Millennium Falcon with X-Wing, and this set and there was one other one and i cannot remember what it was now for the life of me oh uh, moff gideon's light cruiser with uh, boba fett slave one so i may go back and get more of these things even though this was a bit of a nightmare for a while uh, and i'll get to the parts that were but uh overall i'm pretty happy with the build i think it looks really really nice i mean it's never going to match a bandai perfect grade plastic model kit but it's it's not it's just paper and it's $14.97 so for that for what it is um, I'm pretty happy with it so that's it for the box inside the box you're gonna get the instruction manual which I'll flip through here and show you some of the issues there with that you're gonna get this nice poster which shows you Death Star 2 uh, being built and it's got just some space on the background and some Star Wars logos and an atmosphere from a planet, I think, on one side of it. And then you have the actual sheets that you get. These are still shrink-wrapped. I haven't put these together yet, which I am I might do for another YouTube video just to show you how to build this based on some lessons learned. But you can see here how they do it. Um, the, death, the Star Destroyer had 240 or 250 individual punch parts. And uh, so that one obviously took a long time. If I clocked it, I want to say it came in around nine hours on and off of building the Star Destroyer. And that was kind of going slow, taking my time. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's going to take time. I, I don't even know how long these little ones will take, but there's not that many sheets here. So I am guessing it will not take very long to put this one together. So let's get to the... Let's get to the instruction manual here. And the instruction manual, um, right off the bat, so when you flip through it, you're gonna see, uh, just like, not like a Lego quality instructions, but so it's not, they're not terrible. I mean, you, they give you the part number that you need. They give you the individual parts to assemble in that step. They kind of show you arrows where each one goes. Here's the one thing that threw me off right away. They give you this little bit of craft glue and it's clear. It comes in a tube, maybe two inches tall by a half inch wide or in diameter i don't have it anymore it, they don't give you enough to certainly last beyond the first few pages uh even using sparingly but they say craft glue required during assembly drip icon identifies where glue is applied so that to me would symbol or signify that these parts do not require any glue that only this part requires glue okay simple enough to understand on that step and then moving on to the next step, now you have a drip icon that is somewhere in the middle of all of these parts. Okay, does that mean it's this part? Does that mean it's this part? Does that mean apply to all parts? And again, drip icon identifies where glue is applied. Is that just a generic, hey, put the glue here, then why wouldn't they have put that drip icon over here somewhere in the middle again? So that was confusing. It got to the point where I actually ran to the store. I bought some other type of glue, like a monster glue. And that just started creating a nightmare for me. And I just said at one point, the heck with it. And I didn't even bother gluing anything else. 
and it's held together. I mean, this thing is, it's sturdy. Once, once these tabs are in, it's sturdy. And the reason why it's sturdy, as sturdy as it can be, I shouldn't say it was perfect, is this is fairly thick. It's corrugated. Uh, the camera's never gonna pick it up, but it is a corrugated cardboard. And I can't get a nice focus on it, but um, it's, it's maybe a mil, two mil thick. So these are, some, these are some of the empty parts from the stand here. I just wanted to, I forgot to bring those out earlier when I showed you the sheets. But anyway, flipping through the instructions really quickly, um, you're gonna go you know, system by system, step by step. Um, there's areas where you have to flip the model upside down. And that wasn't entirely clear at first because when, when you're not adding new steps and you're looking at just what's already been built in gray, it starts to blend together, especially with all these tiny little microscopic tabs. Um, so for example, I think it's here. The model's actually been flipped upside down. Uh, and so that was just something you gotta keep in mind. And then the arrows don't really mean flip it upside down or flip it right side right. It's just go to the next step. So um, all of these areas here, I think are fairly straightforward. Uh, you start getting into some really complex builds. Um, the circular pieces here uh, were pretty tough. These areas, these areas here, just because you're trying to wrap this piece of cardboard, which wants to bend a certain way around this uh, cog area, which is part of the uh, engine assembly there in the back. So, um, but that's that's what the instructions look like, right? They they're they're not terrible, but again, glue here, glue this part. So I'm guessing that just means glue that part, glue that part, but not that one, not that one, not that one. Oh, uh, you're not seeing my finger. So it just means glue this part, glue this part, but don't worry about gluing that one, that one, that one, or that one. So again, it, when I was on this step already, I was like, no, nope, I'm not gluing anything. And there was an area here um, specifically that gave me an enormous amount of trouble. And that would be these panels right here. Um, putting these panels on the top of the Star Destroyer was incredibly difficult. And the issue I encountered there, and, and if somebody out there has built a lot of these before, maybe you can assist us all in the comments with what you might know, is you have a substructure that's visible on one side only and on the bottom you've already paneled the bottom of this right there's already been these panels applied to the bottom on the bottom it says don't glue the panels on the top it says glue the panels uh, as you can see by the drip icons so I started in the back which was easy enough to work with some of these and I worked my way forward when I got to here this particular uh, sort of v-shaped panel gave me a nightmarish time uh, there's two tabs here that stick up that you have to get the panel over easy enough then the next two tabs that stick up are supposed to be back here the problem was by the time you get forward to back these tabs now are becoming more and more misaligned because of the structure in here these individual pieces remember they're coming in from two different sides have to fit together and line up perfectly. And there's no way to get a tool under there to try and, first of all, there's no way to get leverage under there from the bottom and push on that specific tab. Because again, remember the bottom has already been paneled. So uh, this just took a long time. I wound up using a whole lot of extra tools, uh, things like this, just a wood uh, skewer for kebabs that I had laying around the house that helped with reach because this is a very long skewer. So that helped with trying to get in from this side. Maybe if I had done this panel first, it would have been a lot easier too. Uh, I would have I would have been able to get in from the front or from this side and push these tabs into an area. Um, I wound up using this, just a pry tool to try and get under each of these areas here and pry that tab into place. And then a plastic spudger with a pointed end that I had. Um, those three things I think would be invaluable to building this, but, and the initial frustration mounted when I couldn't get this mounted and I was just looking at it and, and from a macro view here, you can see all the areas where it just doesn't look good, right? I mean, there's just little blotches here where, but overall, I'm glad I stuck with it um, because it does look really, really nice. It's paper, right? It's, it's cardboard essentially, but from a distance, if I zoom out on this thing, 
I mean, that looks like a model kit. And it would be really cool if you could figure out a way to light it with fiber optics or something. That I'm not going to do that now. I'm not taking it apart. But for those of you guys out there who build the Bandai Perfect Grade stuff, I'm sure you could light this thing. There's plenty of room in there to put a battery pack and your fiber optic wires and then come in through the sides here where you have different wiring or lighting or especially in here and figure out a way to light that. But overall, it's it's a nice kit. For $14.97, I cannot complain. I mean, I guess I did already, but it, it, overall, it's a nice kit. Um, it comes with a really nice stand, just a cardboard stand with the Star Wars logo on it. Again, you're putting all this together. Um, the bottom of the Star Destroyer here, you've got the bay, uh, which they pull, you know, where, where the ship the TIE fighters and stuff come out of and in the first movie where they where they brought the Corellian cruiser into. So um, really nice, though. I mean, just details everywhere. Again, printed. There's, there's texture to it. Not texture, but there's layers to it. So you'll see, like, a variety of layers to mimic the actual model and then to break up some of the lines on it just so it gives it like some dimension and depth the turbo lasers here really really cool uh representations again from a distance this thing looks really really nice um the shield generators up here i'm probably gonna get some of these things wrong i don't know what this part is called but um these i think are the shield generators and then the main bridge area here with with some lights for the the imperial command crew and stuff so um let's see the back I'll have to try and handle this thing off the stand on my camera. So here's the back, and you've got all of your engines. And then flipping this thing like this. Here's the bottom. So again, you have some areas here, some textured areas, some depth areas here where it's sticking out. There's that uh, octagonal piece I don't know what it's called and the bay which is really cool that bay I think is really cool and then you have the front working your way through there so um, it's big it's 30 30 point one six inches I think according to the box and uh, so it's gonna take up some space I mean it's over two and a half feet long for sure which is it's just it's it looks nice like i said so um again instructions not the greatest but they do the job i think the biggest issue for me was see a lot of the stuff here they're just there's no there's no glue icon and i think i started by by well this one in particular here's an issue so like number 14 you're making this particular engine and then no glue icons and then you come back here and 13 glue icons 12 glue icons, but 14, no glue icons. It's the same part. It's literally, you're making the same part three times. So I don't know, take it with a grain of salt. But um, like I said, I, I'm impressed for $14.97. If you have a Costco near you, I think it's worth it. I would, uh, I would recommend it. And then what I think I'm gonna do is because these are relatively small builds, I will probably just uh, set my tripod up here and film the actual building process. Um, I'm gonna try and do it with no glue again because like I said when I got to this this step here all these steps here uh, I wasn't gluing any of this. I didn't glue any of this down there. They fit There's a friction fit to each tab anyway um, And pushing some of those tabs in to the slots. It was it was almost bending the tabs. So you really have to push from the side to hold that tab into place as you're putting it into the slot and then push from the top at the same time. So especially with these turbo lasers, these were really tight fit. Um, and then some of these textured panels up here, not texture, but layered panels up here where you have partial, partial tabs that are allowed to bend a little bit easier uh, to, to form the angle. Um, those, were, those were tricky. You had to push on the side again while you're pushing from the top. So just little things. Um, if there's anything that you guys would like to see in addition to this, uh, like I said, I may run to Costco and get some of these other model sets because I think they are, they are really nice and they're done. You have to have some real estate to display it. Um, but I think overall, I'm, I'm pretty pleased. And then here's the shuttle instructions. So I think what I'm going to do is if you guys want, comment down below. Let me know if you want me to build these uh, sort of on camera in real time, if you will, and post the building experience of looks like the TIE Fighter is pretty simple. Uh, or the Imperial shuttle here. I can, I'm sure I can 
finagle that by putting the camera on a tripod. So that's it. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit subscribe, comment down below. And if you like what you see and you'd like to see more of this stuff, let me know. Thanks, guys. Super Action Guy out.